Time to get a look at the markets now. And on Tuesday, I was joined by DTN lead analyst Todd Holtman. This week's crop progress report showed the Nebraska corn crop is 30% harvested. That's not too far off from the pace of 33% this time last year. For Nebraska soybeans, harvest is at 60%. That's actually above last year's 52% pace, but behind the 67% five-year average. I began this week's interview by asking Todd what we can learn from these numbers. Well, uh, you know, I would say, Troy, for Nebraska, we're actually doing better than most across the Corn Belt. Uh, we haven't had the big winter storm yet like the Dakotas did. We haven't had the excessive moisture that a lot of areas did. So Nebraska's faring uh, pretty well. It's, it's the rest of the Corn Belt that I'm very concerned about uh, uh, for the reasons I just stated and also uh, because we've still got crops out there that are uh, fairly immature in a lot of areas and just not ready for winter. So with everything that's happened this year, any advice for producers who are starting to plan for next year? Do they need to take a different approach when making those 2020 planning decisions? Boy, you know, it's very difficult to outguess Mother Nature. Who would have thought we'd had the year that we've seen this year? I mean, we've never had a planning season like this in my lifetime. And, and uh, for most of the listeners out there, I don't think anyone can think of a, a tougher planning situation than what uh, we saw nationally this year for the corn and soybean crops. So it's very hard to outguess or outmaneuver uh, Mother Nature on those instances. Uh, as far as anything else, I, you know, I just always say you have to keep your ears and eyes open and, and you can't just always depend on the way things have gone in the past. And, and that's maybe the best help I could offer. Yeah, and when it comes to ag exports, China always comes to mind. So there's been talk of some purchases, but we've heard that before. What are the updates you have for us on our dealings with China? Yes, well, as, as things stand right now, China has been a more active buyer in this new crop season, 2019 to 20. Uh, their commitments right now for soybeans are up over 200 million bushels, and that's much better than what we were looking at uh, a year ago. Unfortunately, the rest of the world uh, d is not having the same level of soybean purchasing interest uh, that we saw a year ago. For one reason, our soybean prices are, are a little over a dollar higher than they were a year ago right now. Also, I think there was just maybe a little sense of concern a year ago about how the whole tariff situation would play out, and maybe there was a little more concern about maintaining their supplies of soybeans. Uh, that doesn't seem to be coming through this year. But China has been active. We had another rumor in the market today that perhaps they'd buy another 360 million uh, bushels of U.S. soybeans without charging their private companies tariffs. Uh, it didn't have a lot of price impact uh, in our market today, and I think part of it is, as you say, we hear these rumors come and go, and we don't have any solid evidence yet. And also read where you wrote that uh, you said if things with China don't become clear by next spring, then farmers may just say, well, I don't know if China's going to buy these soybeans, so I won't plant them. But w So what would that look like for U.S. ag? Oh, Troy, that is my number one concern moving forward and looking at the spring of 2020. Uh, if we have anything close to a normal weather season again, unlike what we saw this year, we're going to have about 180 million acres available to plant corn and soybeans. Now, if soybeans, if there's no confidence in the U.S. soybean demand and uh, we only get, you know, 80 or 85 million acres of soybeans uh, planted, well, that leaves 95 to 100 million acres of corn. That's a very bearish scenario for our corn market and uh, really makes it tough once again on the U.S. ag economy as a whole. Now, there's a lot of uncertainty between now and then. A lot can happen in the next six months before we start planning again. But just the way things look right now, that is definitely my number one concern. Is there anything else that you're tracking internationally that we should keep an eye on? Uh, well, of course, we're always interested in exports. Our corn exports are having a very tough time right now. Brazil's out competing us. Uh, Argentina had a bigger corn crop this year. They've got an election where there's a possibility. I think they're afraid of uh, perhaps an export tax hike coming, so it's, uh, it's possible that Argentina has been uh, a, a more aggressive seller and competitor for our corn market, and, and so that's been a very tough demand concern for us right now. And then uh, as an outlier, we've got uh, uh, Brexit always in the background, but overall I can't say that Brexit is going to have a big impact on our ag markets. Okay. And I wanted to take a second to talk about ethanol as well. Biofuel groups, they're unhappy with the EPA's rule on blending requirements. 
and say it's falling short of what they were promised. So where does this stem from and what do you see happening? Boy, it, it seems like it's been a long t uh, time contention with uh, EPA and our, our uh, ethanol support groups. And uh, this just seems to be another loop in the roller coaster once again. Earlier this month, uh, it, it looked like uh, good news for the biofuel industry that uh, uh, there would be some compensation for the, the refinery waivers uh, that have been promised by EPA so that we could maintain that 15 billion gallon uh, mandate for our corn ethanol uh, demand. Uh, yet when EPA came out with an actual proposal, they only uh, uh, suggested compensating for roughly half uh, of those waivers. So that was another big disappointment to the industry. I'm sure they'll continue negotiating that back and forth. But it remains a, a concern for our corn demand as a whole. The 15 billion bushel mandate gives us about roughly 5.2, 5.3 billion bushels of corn demand each year, and, and we just hate to see that uh, get diluted. And finally, Todd, as we leave you today, people are working out budgets for next year, and they're going through their marketing and risk management plans. What final advice do you have for us? Uh, you, you know, it's always, uh, it's typically tough this time of year uh, when you're in the harvest period, but uh, I would say that there could be some pricing opportunities in January, especially if we see some uh, significant adjustments to the crop estimates for corn and beans that I suspect may be coming. Uh, the other thing, I don't think it's too early right now to consider at least making some uh, new crop sales for 2020 corn. Uh, especially keeping in mind the concern I have about the number of planting acres that could be in play next spring.